You may not have heard of the Brighton Buccaneers, but they are to baseball in this country what Manchester United are to football. They've won just about every domestic honour in the game. And yesterday they were victorious in their first home game of the season, beating Hounslow 11-0. And Mike Bushell was there. Uh, Nick Carter's going to lead it off from the mound. Dave Donaldson is at third base, batting six. There's far more to baseball than hit and run. This man hasn't got fleas, but he has got a rather cunning plan to get his players to last base. It's one of those games where once you understand it and once you've played it for a while, you'll just love it. A lot of people compared it to the ballet. You know, it's, just, it's really it's just a great sport. In this country, the closest most of us ever get to baseball is the traditional baseball cap. But if you're looking for a sport in which the South dominates, this is it, and Brighton is the place to be. The Brighton Buccaneers are the Manchester United of British baseball. They're the reigning champions, they've got the best facilities and attract the top players. One's even prepared to fly down from Scotland every week. I used to play baseball in America and always wanted the high level of standards, so just travel down here to play for a good team, good field, best field in the country. The only problem for Brighton is the lack of decent competition in this country. The game is still way down the list when it comes to school sports. I went to high school for two years uh, in America and I played four hours a day every day, six, for six days a week actually. And you, you can't help but just get really good at baseball. In the land of football and cricket, it's unlikely that baseball will ever take off as it has done in the States. But that won't worry Brighton as long as they're winning their league. Next on their agenda is the European Cup next month. Mike Bushell, BBC South Today. Well, we're going to move continent now because uh, if you've been watching MLB 99, you'll know that the Great Britain baseball team are actually in Italy at this very moment in the European Championships. And, of course, the importance of that is their aim is to finish in the top two in the European Championship, and that will book their place in the 2000 Olympics. Obviously, really important. Well, MLB's Chris Luke caught up with the team before they left as our boys from Blighty get set to put British baseball firmly on the map. My name is Gavin Marshall and I'm a pitcher on the Great Britain national team. I'm Alex Malihudis, um, I play centre field. My name is Nick Carter and I uh, pitch a little bit and also play the outfield. My name is Gary Roberts, I'm the head coach of the Great Britain national team. <laughs> I was born in um, Hull, England. I was born in Pembury, Kent. I grew up in Tunbridge. Who was it? I love his guts for garters. I played rugby. I never even liked sports, really. I did actually play a lot of football. I also played cricket for my school team. <laughs> You're not supposed to keep filming it, damn you. <laughs> I started playing baseball mainly because my dad played and my granddad played. So for me, um, it was just a family tradition. My mum got me into baseball. She saw a game and she went out to America and uh, I just picked it up straight away. I loved it. There's actually a, a youth team in my town in Tunbridge and I was walking home from school and I saw the team working out and they just asked me if I could join in. It just all went from there, snowballed. I used to watch you know, Nolan Ryan a lot. He was the main guy, got all of his bugs. Robbie Thompson was always a favourite of mine. He used to play for the San Francisco Giants, and he was a scrapper. Like, he'd go out there and someone would throw at him and take a pitch for the team. You know, he'd dive all around the place getting dirty. You know, it's the kind of ball player I'd like to be. British baseball is growing, and guys like Gavin, Alex and Nick are leading the way. But to get this good, you still need to go to America. The reason I went to America was because at the time um, the British coaches could only um, take you so far and um, I got to that point and um, I wanted to go and see how far I could really go. When I went out there, I went out on a baseball trip with Gavin about 1995 and I saw this high school and I fell in love with it. I was like, I really want to go here and I talked to the coach and I, you know, I hooked it up that way. I went to school out there myself for a year. They need to be playing every day and I think this is why we have a certain number of guys over here that do go to school if they can in the States and get that chance to play every day. But if you want to get really good, you've got to go. I mean, you can, there's only so far you can go in here and you, you get to a peak and you don't get any better. If you want to get really good, you've got to go and work, work hard and go to America. So what's up with the funding of facilities in the UK? And how does it compare with other European countries? We're not the, probably the worst in Europe, but we're one of the worst. I mean, you know, there's a, there's a lot of teams out there who are a lot worse off than we are, but, you know, our funding and stuff is so limited, it, it does, you know, kind of does affect us on the field you know we you know we got our funding cut a little bit this year and it hurt us a lot we've got as much talent as a lot of teams in europe um as germany um for instance as uh france or belgium but we go over there and you know germany has beautiful baseball fields 
they have, you know, they have a lot of kids involved because they can afford it. You know, they can afford to put up a big stadium and you know have it on, maybe have a few games on the news, whatever. You know, have highlights on the news, things like that to promote it. With regards to facilities, there's very few good diamonds in the country, and uh, equipment hard to get hold of. But uh, facilities really is what we need to improve on. The British team is in Italy right now for the European Baseball Championships. If they make the final, they'll have qualified for the Sydney Olympics. The semis will be good enough for the World Championships. Either way, it's all new territory for them. I've never experienced anything like it, even in America. I've, I've probably never played in an atmosphere like that. I'm really excited. It's going to be great. The first game, it's uh, in Italy and we're playing against Italy. And uh, I imagine there's probably going to be about 15,000 people at the first game uh, cheering Italy on. So it's going to be tough. Well, we're going to rise to the occasion. We're looking forward to it. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Last Sunday afternoon saw the best of British baseball come together when the Brighton Buccaneers and the Windsor Bears met in the British Baseball Championship final. The scenic location at Pavilion Field in Brighton saw baseball fans gather from far and wide, and there was no doubt who the majority were cheering for. We're supporting Brighton today. Brighton! And they weren't wrong. After two innings, they led the Windsor Bears by eight to nothing. And from then on in, there was no stopping them. Johnny and Mike enjoyed themselves, but the real stars of the show were Bucks pitcher Nick Carter and third baseman Dave Donaldson. David comes down from Scotland every format to play for Brighton. And uh, he's playing very well at the moment, hitting the ball very, very well. Hi, I'm Nick Carter's sister, Becky. I just want to say he is excellent. I love him to bits. Despite a gallant effort from Windsor, Brighton went into the bottom of the seventh with a 12 run lead, sufficient enough to take the game on the mercy rule. And here's the play that clinched it. The Windsor Bears for the Brighton Buccaneers and the British champions with 16 runs. So a great win for the Bucks and a great day out for all the spectators. It's a good game, good game to watch. And it's been a good day. <laughs> and Johnny enjoyed getting his hands on the trophy, if only for a few moments. And at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have six points. <laughs> Time for sporting men and women everywhere to cower in fear as we play field of sportsmen. Gary and Rory, you're up first. <laughs> and can we have our first mystery guest, please? Oh, I've had this dream before. <laughs> OK, and your time starts now. This is a bloke with an uh, oversized anti-wanking device. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, where are you, Gary? Say something. Well, over here, Rory. Over here. There's something... Uh, here, what's this? <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's Dwight York! <laughs> <laughs> is it Jonathan Woodgate talking to a witness? <laughs> One bloke behind another. It's not the uh, um, Chicago fudge packers or anything, is it? <laughs> so? There's a tiny little bloke here, Rory. Little, little Where bloke. are you? Yeah. Linus, have another one. Is that, is that your helmet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, bad luck. It's in fact the British baseball team. I'm surprised you didn't get baseball there, lads, when you actually felt the bat roar. That would have been, <laughs> been the giveaway, personally. I was, he was rush. too busy trying to get in the, oh, Gary, is this your helmet joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
And now baseball. It doesn't have a high profile in this country yet. But two players from Tunbridge are hoping to change that. They'll both be in the British team later this week. But their aim is the World Championships and possibly even the Olympics. The first time I played baseball, just when I hit the ball and I saw the ball fly and it carried on and on, I just fell in love with the game. Nick Carter and Alex Malihudis have been practising baseball together since childhood and they're among the best players in the UK, even if not many people appreciate it. A few friends at university said nobody knows you and you play for Great Britain and it's, it's, it's unfortunate but I've got to carry on just doing what I'm doing. To pursue their love of the sport, both players went to the United States with mixed success. For the first few months I was out there I thought maybe I'll have a chance and then when the American football season ended at my high school and all the really good athletes came out, I I looked at them play and I thought, wow, these guys are really good. It's going to be a lot harder than I thought. Nick and Alex now play for the Brighton Buccaneers, the best baseball team in England. They'll both be in the British team to face Sweden later this week and they believe the national team is making progress. We're in a top ten in Europe. Potential to be a top four team and go to the World Championships. Obviously, there's a difference between the way we're playing now and our potential, but I really feel that we could, we could reach that, that level in the next European Championships. Whilst there's no doubting Nick and Alex's dedication, they know cricket is still our national summer game. We're never going to be better than cricket. We just want to exist with cricket. We want to be on a par with cricket. We want to be recognised the same as cricket. Because mm. it's a good game. <sighs> Best of luck to Nick, Alex and the Buccaneers. That's the sport. Now, guys, we mentioned uh, last weekend some baseball action happening all over this weekend. Uh, a friendly between the GB baseball team and Sweden, who are over here. And, of course, our very own Just Chetwin was playing. And we sent Eric down with a camera to catch some of the action. If you happen to have been around the Waltham Cross area in Essex this weekend, well, you might have just stumbled across some baseball history. This tournament here, it's actually not a tournament, it's an international series. It's the first friendly series of games that we've had here against another national team since 1980. We've actually hosted the European B pool a few times, but this is the first time we've actually got a top 12 European team to come over and play against us. It's a big deal, and we're really proud to have them, and it's nice that we're playing very competitive baseball. It's just, it's just good to you know, represent your country in your own fields, which we haven't had an opportunity to do for some time. So. Let's hope it carries on. Yeah. While baseball may have some grassroots here in the UK, Sweden are having a fair go at making it grow in the land of cars that are safe and cubed. Well, it's, it's, it's a very small sport. Soccer and ice hockey takes all the time, and uh, we, you know, we do our best, and we love it, and that's what we want to do. It's basically a friendly series against Sweden. It's been 20 years since we've hosted an international top-ranked team. And uh, hopefully, after this weekend, the success that it's going to produce for the game, we're going to carry on just keep doing that every year, hopefully. Well, it's all friendly, and, you know, you're working different pitchers, and, uh, you know, it's a completely different game every game, you know. You just work out some guys, you got some young guys that want to play, you don't put the starting nine all, all the time out there, so, you know, you got different guys out there all the time. So, Josh, two for five today, you happy? A solid day, good start, I'm really happy because we won, that's the key. Everybody played well. You know, we had some of the best players in Britain here today, but we were missing one. One guy who could have probably even made a greater difference. And the question is, Johnny Gold, where were you? We missed you. Well, it could have been unbelievable. I'll tell where you, were you? I'll tell you where it was. I sat on the M25 for two and a bit hours trying to get there, and eventually gave up M25. Great car park. Well, time now to focus on local baseball, from the best in the major leagues to the best here in the UK. The final four in Croydon. Well, it's that time of year again. It's the British Baseball Federation final four tournament. It's our sixth season in a row covering it. But this year, it's not in Brighton. I'm here with Tom Gillespie, Director of Baseball Development. And Tom, why aren't we in Brighton this year? Well, a couple different reasons, Eric. We wanted to have a bit of change of venue. Uh, Croydon gives us a lot more room. We've got both the softball nationals here as well as the baseball nationals. We've got two full-size baseball fields that are committed to baseball here. And more than anything, is just keep it from getting stagnant as we want to get closer to London. Not saying we won't go back to Brighton in the future, but just for years to try something new. Well, we got Nick Carter here, who's a six-year veteran this tournament. And Nick, you know, you've been... So we're thick and thin in this tournament, and uh, have you noticed a stand, the standard of baseball growing in this, in this, in this country, basically? Um, it's, certainly, it's certainly growing, but it's also getting to a point where it's plateauing, and as always, we need to just keep pushing it. Obviously, help with uh, Major League Baseball International will always help that. Uh, it's always good to have foreign players coming over. 
but we really need to concentrate on getting the youth players that aren't making the transition from youth baseball to senior baseball. So it's really we need to concentrate hard on youth baseball to push them into the senior baseball, really. So do you see more people are getting involved in the sport? I think so. I mean, it's we, the numbers say that they are. There's more people that are calling all the time, looking for ways to join a team or start a team. It's just trying to find ways to, to help them out so that we can get there. Oh, that looked like great fun, didn't it? Well, last week we saw the 50th anniversary of the baseball cap. So who better to have here in the studio than the British baseball team, none of whom are wearing their caps. But look, how many caps have you got? Twelve? Ten. Ten. <laughs> one, one per head. Lift them up, everybody. Let's have a look at the caps. There you go. To prove it, a little bit of promoing there. GB. Um, Stefan, you're the head coach. You guys aren't going to the Olympics. Uh, where did it all go wrong? Well, the Olympics actually only permit eight na nations to participate, and uh, GB is not near the top eight at this point. But frankly, that's not much of a, uh, of a downer for GB baseball, considering the United States which is, the, of course, the home of baseball, also did not qualify. For I couldn't believe that when I saw that this morning. Why, how come they didn't qualify? They made it. They invented it. Well, they're in a tough qualifying group, uh, but the other, the other factor is that baseball is not normally played on a single elimination basis. But once the U.S. reached the, the medal round in the, in the North American, Latin American pool, they played a single elimination game against Mexico. Mexico threw an outstanding pitcher, and that outstanding pitcher beat American and and frankly, it's all only one pitcher that can make a difference in a baseball. We've game. got a pitcher here, haven't we? Well, <laughs> you, <laughs> Nick. <laughs> Pressure then if you're the pitcher, isn't it? If, if you're the person who can win or lose the game. Firstly, I'd like to say I appreciate the fact you call me a pitcher, not a bowler. That leads me. That, that certainly. A little bit of knowledge, just a That touch. leads me to believe that you're in the know. A little bit of a pub. Um, <laughs> It really de it depends on a lot of experience. Um, I mean, I've played in the States myself, so I've, I've played for over 15 years now. So pressure at first, yeah, but it, it comes with experience and knowledge, basically, and you learn to override that. And why play baseball? Why not play something that's probably a little bit more po popular here, like football or cricket? Oh, well, I'll be honest with you, I'm a PE teacher, and I've, a big reason for me is I teach a lot of baseball and softball in schools, and when it's taught well, kids just go absolutely crazy. They go nuts. So a big, a big issue for me that needs to be addressed is in teacher training. We need to get this, we need to get baseball in teacher training so that kids are exposed to baseball and it's something new, exciting, and they love okay, it. Okay, just very quickly, when are we going to be the Olympics then? When are we actually going to get in That's there? That's down to this guy, head coach. When's it he needs, give he me needs a to date. get us there. Just, give me a date, there. Stefan. When London gets the Olympics in 2012, we'll be yeah. there with Lord Cole. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks both very That's much it. indeed. That's Best it. of luck. That, that was you. a bit of campaigning from Mr. Coe there. <laughs> anyway, um, that is uh, <laughs> just about it from us for this week.